can use your arm weight. Don't be afraid to use it. This is why I'm also saying, relax your shoulders. Don't put them up here. That's not going to help you. So don't be afraid of arm weight. Pianissimo is created through the... Hi everyone, this is Danai, and today's video is all about how to play the piano softly. How to produce a beautiful and very secure pianissimo in which you can be 100% sure that your sound is going to come, but that it is going to sound incredibly soft and incredibly intimate. So if you're interested in that, then keep on watching. When you're playing piano passages, and especially when you're going into the extremes and playing pianissimo or triple P passages, there are two main mistakes that can happen. The one mistake is that there are ghost notes. Ghost notes meaning that you are meaning to press a key incredibly softly, but there is no sound coming out. So for example, in a scale, it would sound like this. And the D would be the ghost note or that your passage sounds uneven. So in a scale, in a pianissimo scale with an uneven mistake, it would sound like this. And obviously <laughs> these are two things that you definitely want to avoid. So all my tips that I'm going to mention in this video are geared towards avoiding those two situations. The most important thing when you are playing pianissimo passages is that you have the correct body posture. A very typical mistake that we make is we put our shoulders up because we're trying to create this incredibly soft sound that is this psychological response of our body that we kind of pull the shoulders up because we think that's somehow going to put the sound up and we're not going to play as heavily. But of course, that doesn't help at all. So putting your shoulders up doesn't help you. It only makes the chance of ghost notes much higher. So try to really consciously relax your shoulders, put those shoulders down, and not just the shoulders, also relax your arms, make sure that there is no tension in your arms. As I said, the most common mistake when playing pianissimo is tension anywhere, in the shoulder, in the arm, in the elbow, in the wrist, because we feel like we have to somehow hold the weight in order to create a pianissimo sound, but as you're going to see later on, this is a wrong conclusion. So make sure that you're completely relaxed, shoulders down, arm is relaxed, elbows are relaxed, no tension in the arm, and make sure that you feel that your underarm is kind of floating, as if it was floating on some kind of liquid, for example, a kind of oily liquid. You can imagine whatever helps you, but my teacher actually used to say to imagine that the underarm is floating on top of an oily liquid and I found that quite a helpful image. But just imagine that this arm is completely relaxed and just floating on top of the water as if you were swimming and it is simply floating. There is no effort there whatsoever. The conclusion that many of us automatically go towards is that pianissimo sound is connected to arm weight but it is not. So try to leave that whole image of more arm weight means louder, less arm weight means softer. You can use your arm weight. Don't be afraid to use it. This is why I'm also saying, relax your shoulders. Don't put them up here. That's not going to help you. So don't be afraid of arm weight. Pianissimo is created through the speed with which you press down the key. So if you press down the key very slowly, you're going to create a very soft sound. However, it doesn't mean to press it down with no weight in your arms and a lot of tension holding the arms up. Let those arms fall and press the key down slowly and you're going to get a soft but also very secure and reliable pianissimo sound. As you can see, I try to consciously keep my shoulders relaxed keep my arms relaxed and just with weight, slowly press down the key of the piano. Once you've gotten into that whole feeling of pressing the keys slowly, another image or tip that I find pretty helpful is the image that your fingers are kind of grasping something. So not this kind of feeling of, okay, I'm just pressing slowly, but more this kind of image impressing but also grasping. To me it feels like I'm 
somehow sucking the sound out of the keys and it helps me get into that pianissimo feeling. I would definitely recommend trying that. It has helped me. Also connected to that is the movement of moving the arm back slightly when you're pressing the key. It is the same kind of image that you somehow press but then go backwards. It is a very mental thing, like with many things when producing sound on the piano, but it can definitely impact the sound if you have the right image and right feeling in your mind. So try going with a very slow speed and then also grasping with the fingers and also pulling the arm back a little bit. The next tip that I find very helpful is to make sure that your hand is already touching the key before you press the chord. So definitely make sure that you are in position before you press it and don't come from up here hoping to create a, a pianissimo sound. Also, I would say it doesn't help to start up here and then stop right before and then go into the pianissimo. Just try to avoid this playing up here when you're trying to play very softly. So I'm on the key and I'm doing my pianissimo sound as opposed to because I might still be able to produce a pianissimo sound but it doesn't help me in any kind of way to do this. It just makes things more complicated. So I would always prefer going like this. One of the bigger difficulties when playing pianissimo is equalizing every finger especially when you're playing a chord like i've been playing now in the past examples so let's say it's a simple chord like a c major chord played with one three and five you are going to try to equalize the weight on each finger so that it doesn't sound like this with a very strong third finger or very strong fifth finger or very strong thumb so you want it to be very even. And this you can practice by putting your fingers on a flat surface, pressing down those three fingers that you are going to use, and then actually playing with it a little bit and redistributing the weight until you feel that the three fingers have the same amount of weight. And then transfer that onto the piano. This is just a little awareness exercise, but it is so valuable if we are aware of how certain things feel, how it feels when certain muscles are activated, because this awareness is what helps us to create a beautiful sound. Of course, sometimes in a piece, you actually want to intentionally accentuate a voice or bring one voice out. Then, of course, you should practice to make that finger sound more brilliant and make that note stand out. So let's say that you were playing a melody and that melody was in the upper voice of chords. Then, of course, you would make sure that it doesn't sound like this, but like this. With this one projected. A very big subject, I find, when tackling all these soft passages is the use of the left pedal, the una corda pedal. It's called una corda because una corda means one string only and on the grand piano when you press the left pedal the keyboard moves a tiny bit and the hammer only touches one chord. Even up here where we have three chords it is just one chord and when we don't press the left pedal the keyboard moves back and then the hammer touches three chords which is tre corde which means without left pedal so the use of una corda is an important subject i find when talking about pianissimo and piano and generally soft passages because i don't believe that this pedal should be used as a tool to change the volume it is unfortunately very commonly used in any pianissimo or even piano passage because somehow our brain thinks, okay, this is going to be an extra help to make me sound softer. However, that is not completely true. What the una corda pedal does, in my opinion, is really fundamentally change the color of the sound, the quality of the sound. It sounds not as brilliant. It sounds a little more mellow, a little maybe 
dark. It doesn't have as many overtones, of course, because we are not having as many chords that are vibrating. So it is a very different kind of sound. And I try most of the time to reserve the una corda for moments where I really want to have the color change, where I really feel like the atmosphere changes, the character changes, and not simply as a tool to make me sound softer. Of course, sometimes this goes hand in hand, a PPP passage and a color change and una corda is very helpful in that moment. But I want to create a little bit of an awareness where you don't just automatically go for the left pedal when you have a softer passage. Because I think it really is a pity. It can take away from many beautiful passages when you just put your foot on that left pedal and just leave it there instead of using your fingers to create a softer sound and then reserving the pedal for the super special magical moments where you want an actual atmosphere change. And then finally, before I end this video, I want to talk about one pianist that is definitely one of my favorite pianists, a very famous one. It is Mata Agerich, who you probably all know. And I want to mention her in this video because I find that she has a very distinct piano sound. If you have heard her live or if you have watched any of her videos on YouTube, I'm sure that you will have noticed that when there is an accompaniment and a kind of piano melody on top of it, she really projects into the hall and has a sound I find like no other. Definitely go check out some of her performances that are on YouTube because I find it very impressive how she creates this sound that really is not what you would call a typical piano sound. It is not this introvert, intimate sound. It is a very brilliant sound. It is a sound that definitely rings to the end of the hall. And it is not a this careful kind of sound. It is very confident, but at the same time, the character and the atmosphere that she creates is a character and atmosphere of piano. And I find that very impressive. I hope you understand what I mean and definitely go check the videos out to see for yourself. I find that this is a great example of a piano that is not fearful, that is not afraid, that is not filled with una corda, a piano that is confident and secure but is still definitely a piano. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and found my tips helpful on how to create a softer and secure pianissimo. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. Let me know if you have any tricks or tips that you use in order to make sure that your piano sounds beautiful and is very reliable. And I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.